Hello again, everybody. This is Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to the second installment of the ICOM 7300 from A to Z. Today we're going to start on uh, page 3-4 of the manual under basic operation. And we're going to look at some of the details of what you can do with changing frequencies and we'll move on from there. So in the example, they uh, actually go to 15 meters, but I'm going to go to uh, 10 megahertz just because it's a little bit smaller band. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention that I didn't cover last time with the band stacking registers is uh, we went over the fact that you can repeatedly hit the same band and it remembers the frequencies uh, up to three different registers for that band. Uh, the thing I didn't mention is if you look on the screen, there is no indication of which one you're on. There's no indication on the band stacking register screen, and there is no indication on the main screen. So you really don't know which one you're in other than looking at whatever frequency comes up. Not that that matters too much, but if you're looking for some kind of indication of which register you're in, there isn't any there. So... We've gone to uh, 30 meters, the 10 megahertz band. And one of the things that they show you, if you look in the upper left here, you'll see uh, TX, which, and when you key the rig, the TX changes um, to a white outline and the, or to a solid red with white letters. Another thing that that indicator does, though, is if I tune outside of the band you hear a small beep I'll turn that up so you can hear it better um, and when you tune outside of the band the outline on the transmit symbol goes to a dotted line that means that you can't transmit there the radio won't transmit so you're outside of any amateur band and if we go up to the upper end does the same thing you can see that the, disp the, uh, the TX outline changes as I cross out of the amateur band. The other thing you'll notice, I have the marker turned on here in the uh, spectrum scope, and when I go off, you'll see that you get a little green arrow that points to the right. So if you're looking for that marker and you can't find it when you're tuning around, look on either edge and you'll see a little green arrow that'll tell you that uh, you're outside of the range of the spectrum scope. And again, we'll cover that more. So tuning steps. As I've been tuning, you notice that I'm tuning basically in 10 hertz steps here. And one of the things that the radio does is it goes, uh, it's relatively easy to tune in 10 hertz at a time. But if I start going really fast, and actually let me move to a bigger band for that. Let's go to 80 meters. If you start going really fast, you'll notice that the speed that it starts tuning sort of jumps up. Um, so it recognizes that you're really trying to cover a lot of ground and it will speed up the tuning for you as you do that. Now, the other thing that you can change is the tuning step and you can tune in steps. If you touch the kilohertz and hundreds of kilohertz digits you see a little white arrow came on up there and now this zeros as soon as I move the knob and now I'm tuning in one kilohertz step so you move a lot faster and you're also tuning in fixed steps um, and actually and then if you touch it again that'll go away and you're back to tuning uh, fine tuning uh, and if I switch my mode to AM, that arrow comes on automatically. The default tuning mode in AM is in steps. And then the other thing you can do if 10 hertz isn't uh, fine enough for you, if you hold the 10 hertz digit, you get a third digit here, and now you can actually tune in 1 hertz step. So you can really fine-tune if you're uh, trying to get a digital mode signal in or uh, uh, or if you really want to 
tune somebody's voice so that it sounds just perfect. Um, and then let me go back to steps. One other thing you can do with steps, the default here on sideband when I go into step mode and in AM is one kilohertz steps. If I hold this again, uh, sorry, if I hold it as opposed to just touch it, it brings up the step amount. So you can change the step size. So if I want it to be in tens, uh, tenths of kilohertz, It'll do that, and if I hold it again, I can change it to 5 kilohertz. That's not too useful down here in the lower bands, but up on the 6 meter mode, if you're in 6 meters um, and you're trying to tune to the FM part of the band um, and you want to get into a repeater, 5 kilohertz steps might actually make sense. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the default 1 kilohertz, and we'll turn steps off. So we're back there. And that pretty much covers 3-4. Now, if you look on page 3-5, there is yet another fine-tuning function if you want something in between everything that we've already done. And if you press the function button, you get the function screen up. Um, and... Why is this making a liar out of me? Ah, uh, so I have made a mistake here. This only works if I'm either in CW RIDI or a data mode. So let's go to CW. And now if I touch the function screen, there we go. We have quarter tuning. And if I turn that on, it says one quarter up here on the display. And now, as I'm turning this, it slows down the rate that uh, I have to turn the knob further, basically, to, uh, to change the frequency. So again, it just gives you a finer movement on the knob, as opposed to, with it off, the very little movement moves the frequency much further. So if I just, if I go a quarter turn, I'm going, you know, a little over, about a kilohertz and a half. And if I turn quarter turn on in a quarter turn, I'm only going from uh, 639.12 to 639.8, so about 250 hertz, uh, quarter of a her uh, quarter of a kilohertz, oddly enough. So again, for CW uh, or for RIDI or for data modes, uh, it gives you uh, another, an yet another tuning mode. And probably each of you is going to find that you like some of these things and you like and you don't like other ones. And the one final tuning mode that I'm going to show you is if you go back to the uh, band screen, there's an FINP, which is frequency input. And if I uh, go to, if I press that, then it gives me a keyboard and I can type in. So let's see, we'll go to WWV here, 15 megahertz, and hit enter, and it'll just tune directly there. Now, of course, it doesn't change the range. And you'll notice it says here, scope out of range, because I jumped uh, across the other bands, and there is no scope range that's set up for. Uh, this part of the band. And it doesn't sound like we're going to hear WWV. Of course, I don't have the antenna tuned for that. So you can directly enter frequencies, um, whatever. Uh, so if I wanted to go directly up to 6 meters, for example, I can enter a frequency and go directly up to 6 meters. And that pretty much covers uh, three five. Okay, now on page three dash six, the first thing that they talk about is entering a split frequency offset directly. We haven't talked about split mode, so we need to talk about that just a little bit first. There is a split button here, and normally if I have something in my 
uh, B VFO and in my A VFO, if I press the split button, what that says is I want to operate split, and you see that highlight on the display, and also it puts the other frequency on the display for me. And this says that I'm going to receive on this frequency, and when I transmit, I might have the power set to zero here. When I transmit, it goes to the split frequency. This is something that's uh, fairly common if you do a lot of DX work. Now, let's look at how the direct entry works and how that helps you. Uh, so I have this tuned to 14130, which is outside of the amateur uh, voice band. Uh, the bottom of the voice band on 20 meters is 150 for an extra. It's higher than that if you have advanced or general. But uh, below 150 is not voice at all. However, in some other regions, they can use voice below 150. So sometime you may be on and you'll hear a DX station on 14130, and he'll be calling CQ, you know, stateside or CQ US, and he'll say, listening up 25. And what that means is he's transmitting here, but he's listening for people 25 kilohertz up. So with the 7300, you can press the band button. And then if you touch the frequency input button, you see there's a split uh, up here. And it's not super obvious in the manual, but when you enter the split, it's actually in kilohertz. So he sa if he says he's listening up 25, you can just type in 25 and hit split. And then it automatically turns on split mode and sets the split 25 kilohertz up. So now if I were to transmit, I'd be transmitting 25 kilohertz up from where I am. So if you get into DX work and you um, start working a bunch of DX stations that are working split or DXpeditions, sometimes we'll do that, sometimes special event stations, not so much them, but mostly DX stations and DX positions. So that's how you can directly enter split. Uh, and then let's get back out of split here. We looked briefly at the uh, memory channels last time. The other thing that you can do with the direct entry screen, uh, let me back out of that and let me go into memory mode. Now, again, I don't have any memories programmed yet, so this will be not quite as interesting. But if I... Um, oh, now that's interesting. I can't get to the... Oh, I guess I still can get to it, even though there's nothing displayed. So if I do the direct frequency input, I can say, uh, say, 6. And I've done that wrong. So I need to learn how to use this as well. Let me do that one more time. Uh, if you go to the direct frequency input, I apologize. It's the memo button here. So I'm learning right along with you folks. If I were to say 6 and then memo, it goes to memory channel 6. Uh, so the, and again, I don't have anything programmed in it. So the direct frequency input, the memo button, even if you're in VFO mode, you can put in a memory channel number and hit memo, and it puts you into memory mode, and now it's making a liar out of me. Um... Oh, it takes you to that memory, but it doesn't put you in memory mode. See, like I said, you're learning, uh, or I'm learning right along with you as we're going through this. But that's the best way, actually, with any of these radios to learn them, is to play with them. So you can directly enter the memory channel. It doesn't directly put you into memory mode. So um, there's one more thing about that. Now... The one final thing, we talked about the band edge beeps, and let's, uh, I'll go all the way down to the bottom here. Uh, as soon as I leave the amateur band, I get that beep, and the display becomes dotted. Next time, we're going to talk about programming user band edges. And those can be really helpful, especially if you have 
uh, if you if you don't have your extra, you have your general, and you want to make sure you don't accidentally go outside of your band segments, um, you can program in user band edges and have the radio make sure you don't transmit where you're not supposed to. So we'll take a look at that next time. This is Tom, WA2IVD. Thanks for watching another segment on Ham Cured Smoke.